Well, now let's talk about some of the stories in the papers, websites that's caught our eye. We've got James Innes with us, author and entrepreneur. Good morning, James. Good morning, Sally. And uh, one person that the media has been focused on for the last couple of days, in fact, she was a part of our programme yesterday, yes, is, is Greta Thunberg. Um, Time magazine saying she is the person of the year. Indeed, Greta Thunberg, not yet 17, 17 next month, I think. Um, Time Person of the Year, which is uh, an honour she shares with lots of people, including Donald Trump, with whom, of course, she obviously gets on very notoriously. Um, I think what's most interesting about this story is perhaps the, the irony. This is a, a girl who said, and I quote, the climate movement does not need any more awards, and then, of course, we give her one. So <laughs> there's obviously an element of irony in there. Um, uh, last night, obviously, she uh, made a major speech at a conference, and she said almost nothing is being done. And as The Independent pointed out this morning, um, this award isn't going to stop the climate crisis, quite simply. How much difference do you think she's making? I, think, I do think she is making a difference. I, I do worry about her as an individual, perhaps, and the impact this might have on the rest of her life. Um, but I think she is making a difference. She's certainly raising, increasing, generating awareness. Um, but the personal toll on her as an individual, as I said, she's not yet 17. That, as, as a father, that worries me a little bit. I mean, Time magazine points out that 16 months ago, or just slightly more than that maybe, she was just on her own outside the Swedish Parliament protesting. Yeah. And, and in that time frame, she's sort of... Well, she's a global name. It's grown name. out of all proportion, hasn't We've it? All, yeah. We all know who she is. Yeah. She's, she's spoken in front of politicians, heads of state in front of the UN. And, and, and very she's ably even, as well. And yeah. she's even yeah. tackled the likes of Donald Trump. And, yeah. I mean, Jair Bolsonaro, the Brazilian president, she had a spat with him this week. He a little her a brat, brat, I think, yeah. yes, a little brat. I mean, yeah. In a sense, does that help her creating controversy, coming into conflict with people who are seen as, as against There's climate no change? There's thing as bad publicity, is there, I don't think? Yes, a little brat, that's going to make headlines and generate... She put it on her even, Twitter profile. Well, exactly. I'm sure she's quite proud of it. It's, it generates further awareness. It means she's getting noticed, and that's exactly what she's trying to achieve. Here, yeah. But across the world, you know, uh, young people her age, younger, slightly older, are choosing not to go to schools on certain days. I mean, there is this sort of global protest happening as a consequence of, you no, know... It's a, it's, there are pros and cons initiatives. to that, and it's, it's very hard to know where to have an opinion on that one. Now, <laughs> pros and cons of hangover days, yeah, let's James. Talk about something <laughs> you, you run a business, you have a lot of employees. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about this. It's a, a, a London agency, I believe. That's, that is that's right. The trying idea to attract is the young millennials. Absolutely, uh, trying to attract the young millennials. And uh, the idea is that um, perhaps honesty is the best policy. Um, instead of phoning up and saying, oh, I had, a, I had a dodgy kebab last night, I'll be in tomorrow, which is obviously code for <laughs> I've got a hangover. If you're, if you're seriously ill, you're not going to say I'll be in tomorrow. The idea is honesty. OK, it's the Christmas season, lots of Christmas parties, Thursday and Friday nights. The idea is that instead of phoning up... Only Thursday, up, Friday? <laughs> back, um, instead of coming up with a, a, an obvious lie, um, which, which is technically misconduct and could lead to a disciplinary action or, or, or even dismissal, um, just be honest about it. And the company's promoting that. I don't like the term hangover days. I it, think... Um, yeah. yeah Duvet days better, maybe? We live in a world with a lot of alcohol abuse, so, so hangover days perhaps sends the wrong message. But I do believe in the policy behind it. It's something I support with my stuff. Honestly, best policy. We asked the question, is this flexible working gone mad? I mean, <laughs> Is this really taking it too far? I mean, how much more do bosses and the people running small businesses have to take on? I'm a firm believer in flexible working and remote working as well, and this combines both of them. So, but yes, it's okay. perhaps taken to a little bit of an extreme. Let's hope it's something that's limited to December and doesn't go all year round, <laughs> is what I so would what say. So what does your office party look like then? Have you had it already, or is it still um, to come? No, that's still to come. Unfortunately, I shan't be attending because I, I, I can't drink anymore these days. I've got small children at home, and uh, <laughs> I have to be in bed by 9 o'clock most days. <laughs> <laughs> you sounds like my lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. For other reasons. James, it's been great to have you on Thank the programme. Thank you very much, James Innes.